Okay, so I'm kind of figuring out how I want to go about the first stage, which is going to be all of the colors. So all of the colors that we see in the photograph here, hoping that there's not a huge glare, all of those colors that we see here, I want to start by adding those first. That's going to be the first stage of this dyeing process. And the um, most prominent color that we're seeing here is this beautiful gold color of what used to be a bright yellow rose from what I would gather from this photo. And so I want to start as that as my initial layers, whatever this goldy bright uh, tobacco color is happening here. I want to start there and build on top of that. So we're kind of essentially building up color and then we're going to be breaking it down by toning it down and adding that depth of that black. I've, as I've been thinking about this, I went in and had some breakfast, thought about it some more, and what I'm thinking is that it's not necessarily adding black all over the top of this, which I still think is gonna be part of the technique. I think I'm gonna wanna add black over the top of some of the color that we lay down. However, I think that we can bring out that dimension in a few different ways, um, even if it's not black, even if it's using a really heavy, saturated gray, um, but we're still, I'm still working on that. I'm still mulling that around, but I do know that no matter how we go about doing that, I definitely want to add color first. And I want to start with that beautiful gold um, base that we see here. And I want to figure out a way on top of that gold or some way with that gold to incorporate the veins that you see running through the gold. They are kind of like a really deep burgundy color almost. After we do that, then we're gonna work on the um, petals, that purple that we see at the tip of the petals. There's bound to be some empty space. After that, where I can pull out that beautiful emerald kind of bluey green that's going on there. Now, one thing about that emerald green and the way that I want to approach this is I don't just want to find in my collection of dye an emerald green. I want to create that color that you're seeing there by layering a couple colors on top of one another. And in my experience, I know the combination of dye that can create that beautiful crisp emerald, but almost a blue emerald, if that makes any sense, um, green color. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go with that and then we're gonna see what, where that takes us. I am definite, it is not lost on me that there is a beautiful, um, from the leaves or the part of the stem at the bottom of the base of the rose, there's this beautiful green portion right here next to that pretty emerald one that we're seeing here, but this one, which is a real deep, almost like a pine green that's beautiful if that were kind of a ribbon of color running through the colorway, that could really be beautiful too. So I'm excited for that part too, but that, will be one of the last things that I add in the color department before we start toning the whole thing down. So let's go ahead and start with getting, um, I'm getting my pans warmed up right now. I haven't added my yarn yet. I'm going to begin by adding the dye that I need for that initial base layer. Then I'll add my yarn and then we'll start adding more layers of color on top of that and see where that gets us. Okay, so I'm about to add some dish soap to this particular bath right now. I am going to be doing um, a separate collection of the BFL DK weight yarn that I offer in the shop. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a blue face luster wool yarn in this particular pan. Uh, because I want to be able to show you the variation of the colorway on the two different bases this time, this particular pan is going to have that BFL weight yarn in it. 
There's a lot of lanolin in a blue face luster yarn. Um, I love that about this yarn. It gives it such a beautiful hand, but it does mean that it is a little bit more on the greasy side because a lot of that lanolin is still in the yarn. Even after it undergoes the superwash uh, process, it still holds on to a lot of lanolin. And in my opinion, um, that's sign of a really good yarn. A lot of the yarns that I offer in the shop um, are a little bit higher in lanolin content, but this one is significantly higher, which means that I want to break some of that oil down a little bit um, before I start to dye it. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of this dish soap into this bath where the BFL is going to go so that before I add any additional colors, I've broken down a little bit of that extra grease, which gets added back to the yarn at the end um, when I soak it in Euclid. Some of that lanolin gets added back and it's super, super luscious and soft after it's all done. So I'm going to do that with this particular pan right here. Okay, so the yarn is in. I decided I wanted to add the yarn dry for this one. Um, so that way I would get a little bit more of a crisp variegation with that first layer, allowing me some bare space to work with for those additional colors that we're gonna be adding. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. It's had a chance to absorb that first layer of color and I am left with a beautiful canvas to add additional colors on top of that. So let's go ahead and take a look at where it is right now. Okay, so this is where we are right now. You can see that there are um, ribbons of this beautiful kind of gold color coming through on the bottom here. Um, um, it's a really beautiful combination of colors. I used two different colors of dye to create that, and so I'm hoping when I do flip this over that we do see a little bit of a variation between the dark and the more yellowy golds coming through here. I'm starting to get little bubbles coming through here, and that's a good sign because that means we're getting the water up to temp. Now, when you have shallow water like this and all of this yarn essentially crowding the pan, if you see bubbles coming up through your yarn, that doesn't necessarily mean your water is boiling. It just means that there's so much stuff going on in the pan that that air um, you know the heat needs to rise out of something and so it kind of comes bursting out through the yarn in the form of these little bubbles so that's not something to worry about but you do need to keep an eye on that you don't want it to get crazy hot and start rapidly bubbling when you start seeing that that's a good uh, indication that it's time to turn your temp down but this is great this means I am ready to add new color and I'm excited because it's gonna be really beautiful so here is the 8020 merino nylon two ply you can see uh, how it's taken its color and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the pan that has the blue face luster DK white yarn in it because I think it's gonna be an interesting comparison Okay, so here is the pan that has the DK weight yarn. Now, some things to note here, and this is what I love about this base, is the depth of the color. So there's a lot less white space going on here if I'm comparing that to this 8020, um, you can see lots of uh, lots of um, areas that are lighter, but they're not necessarily as pale as white as that merino nylon two ply. And part of the reason is that blue face luster wool, when it is processed into yarn like this, has a natural creamy color. The base of the yarn is kind of a, a real creamy. I almost want to say like. I don't want to say off-white because that's really not what it is. It's just almost like a banana yellow color if I had to explain it. It's a creamier yellowy yarn color. So it's going to add warmth to anything that you put on it. And so if you look at what we have here, there's a lot more warmth coming through on the yarn. And that's what makes, you know, dyeing this yarn base and seeing it all finished uh, kind of an experience because you get to see that variation of color. Plus you get to see that added warmth that is given to this particular um this particular yarn when it's dyed. So it's really, really beautiful. So I'm seeing lots of really pretty warmth happening in here gently. It's almost like you can see little bits of red coming through, or I don't even know if I'd say red, almost like kind of, you know, tints of pink maybe, but not pink, it's really hard to explain. It's very beautiful. What I'm seeing on my camera uh, screen is actually very accurate to what I'm seeing in reality. So that's, so you can kind of see that take that as it is but that's a really cool comparison excited about that lots of beautiful space here to um to play with with color so i'm gonna go ahead and cover this up the rest of the baths are looking good here's another two ply you can see lots of beautiful white space there that we're going to be working with and then also this one i am going to press this down i haven't done that yet for this one press it in there yeah 
Oh, an amazing canvas, super excited. Okay, next what we wanna do is we wanna flip that over, expose what's on the other side so we can really get a good idea of what we have um, to work with. I don't wanna just start covering that white space the way it is there. Because it's an awful lot of undyed real estate, I really wanna see kind of the ratio to dyed and undyed that I have right now. And the only way that I'm gonna be able to do that is if I start moving that yarn around, flipping it and seeing what I have. So that's gonna be where I go next. I wanna flip it, see what kind of real estate I do have to work with and in what proportion, and then we'll move on to the next step. 